What's happening guys? Dan here, DD Speed Shop. So, we're working on 55 Chevy Nomad stuff. The old Left 4 Dead Nomad, which ain't, ain't really Left 4 Dead no more. Uh, did a bunch of scooting around the last couple days, it cleaned up a little bit, I haven't really been filming. I ended up tracking down a bunch of the trim that I needed through my buddy BW. He actually went down and got a bunch, so I went through basically everything I have. And I found out I had a lot more than I thought. So I have almost all the stuff I need for this side. There's a couple little uh, panels in here and, and kind of stuff like that I had to order. Which, well, order. Uh, by order, I mean overpay for used junk. But uh, Nomad stuff, I kind of feel like I've learned when you see it, you buy it. And that's the end of it. So when I originally got this car, I was missing all the trim for around this side. This side's so rotten. I mean, this is junk it's all falling apart so i gotta melt the weld to strip in there i guess um there were some trim pieces on the inside i found that sort of stuff um yeah so the issue i'm gonna run into i do want to paint this car and uh but i believe you have to paint the car then this trim gets screwed on then you put the glass in and it's held on with this stuff and then the garnish moldings go on so you kind of need these things to care. Otherwise, you got to take it all apart to paint it. Or I mean, you're you're masking around, which isn't the end of the world. But at this point, we might as well paint it. Long story short, it's on 500 bucks. It's got to find a way to get it shipped. Hopefully, it won't be too expensive, and it'll show up in one piece. Anyway, that's the update. Just want to thank BW. So we're back in the front end here. This is where we left. We put the motor and trans in. Uh, I pulled the plug. This thing already had the oil drained out of it previously, but I, I let it sit just so it's all out because the oil pan, she coming off. Now down here we have our center link. And obviously in here and in here is a couple of bushings. Well, we're not going to change them and there's a few reasons for that. The main one is, I forgot to order them. <clears throat> but these are like steel ones. I know they sell like ball bearing stuff in there. They have no play in them. They look good. So... We're going to put them back together. We are going to pull off the tie rods because they're all beat up and bent. Fortunately, they're just sitting in there. Like this one literally has a lug nut holding it together. So we got all Moog stuff. We'll put those together and uh, see what it looks like. Pull the oil pan off. This oil pan I measure, I believe it's 9 inches for the sump. And I have this one. This is like a whatever. This is... I don't know if it's homemade or is a Marosa one. This one's a couple inches shorter, but not quite short enough, and ultimately it's much deeper. So the old pump won't work. And if you look at how small a, uh, or how short, I guess you want to call it, the stock pan is, that's all we're looking for. So I believe if we mimic that length and butcher up this pan, we should be good. Now it would be nice to just put a stock pan on. I had those thoughts, but. I gotta buy a stock pan. I probably won't have a use for this wide sump pan for anything, because everything I built is tri it seems like. Or the Nova or whatever, which is all rear steer. So it has to be shortened up a little bit. The oil pump, uh, the pickup and all is all set for this pan. I bet there's baffles in there. So if I mark it, cut it, bring it back and re-weld it back in, it won't be perfect, but it'll be good enough. And ultimately, this probably has an extra quart or two of oil uh, like fill, like it's probably like a seven quart pan. Even if I cut a few inches out, it'll probably still be a five quart pan to back to stock. And what we're doing with this, it'll be just fine. So we'll take these tie rods off and uh, measure them up and start taking them apart. We'll do that on the bench. We'll set the camera up, and then we'll pull the oil pan off, make sure everything clears, do a little measuring, and kind of go from there. I guess should be a pretty easy night. I'm hoping. I hate dealing with, well, pulling an oil pan off is kind of lean when it's in a car. Look, there's nothing around here. There's no exhaust. And actually, there's a fair bit of room on this old girl. So it should come off no problem. I don't have a seal, a new pan gasket seal, so hopefully you can be really careful. Maybe a little bit of uh, silicone going back on and knock her out real quick. So, we have the tie rod in the vise. Now, typically what I do is I heat the bejesus of these things and take them out. Every time I do that on a video, everyone always says, you're an idiot, which, I mean, valid. Knock a, a chisel or a flathead in the center and open it up, and then I'm not 
heating it up and screwing around, all that stuff. So, I measured it. You, you get the alignment kind of close. I hose it down with some uh, penetrating oil to give you guys the benefit of the doubt here and as much of a chance as you can have. So, we'll strip this down real quick and see, uh, see if your way works better than mine. I hope it does, because the heat's a pain. Oh, we're off to a good start. Luckily, this is all this original hardware. It's probably Nomad only and super expensive. All right, so we got this thing on here. Let's see if I have to readjust, but. If we're doing anything here, hopefully we are. Okay, no one said how many swacks. So that's how many you're getting. We'll see. What happens here? You know what? It opened it up, but I can see it starting to twist. It's just, I believe, seized in the threads. But you know what? We'll whack this as well. Just to give you every little bit of help. So that's all opened up. I'll admit when I'm wrong, and it might be on the next video. All right, you're all right, I'm an idiot. But now, I'll know forever and ever, hopefully one other uh, degenerate learned a lesson. What way does this go? Uh, it's pretty slick, pretty slick trick, guys. All right, so we get this side out. I assume the other side will come off just as easy. So we'll flip it around. We'll do that, and then I'll uh, do the other side off camera. Get these painted while they're drying. We'll take the oil pan off. All right, I think we'll go two for two. Well, how about that? Just that easy. Well, don't do what Dan does. You waste a bunch of torch gas and heat yourself up at risk of fire. Spend the uh, eight cents on a chisel and take them out. This is way easier. These are actually in pretty good shape too. All right, so I'll, uh, I'll get this all finished up and then I'll bring it back when they're painted. Well, I guess we'll work on the thing. We'll come back when it's painted. I like to run never season these things, but again, that's probably wrong. It's my own head. Oh man. So sleeves are there. You got one coat of paint on them. You know, I just learned this trick actually, guys, but you can use it. Uh, when you're trying to take you support this jam a chisel in there, hammer in there, it opens up, comes apart like nothing. DD Speed Shop original. Don't forget where you learned that. Um, I got all my tie rods kind of pre assembled, ready to go. I am missing one little kit i probably lost it myself but i just need a a zerk but no big deal i can get that taken care of whenever so that's good to go uh, i'll put another, another coat of paint on those things i'm going to pull the oil pan off 
it's pretty simple. It's got a, I don't know, pile of bolts, quarter inch bolts, I think, the whole way around. It'll just kind of plop down and out. So I'll get that off uh, real quick. What I am going to do is just do a couple of quick measurements to kind of see about where it is, maybe, if I can uh, measure off the cross member uh, type thing, you know, from the front so I'll know the distance. And then when I have the oil pan off, I'll put the steering on. I work it back and forth, figure out the closest to the oil pan, I guess, it would, the, the center link would be, and then I can measure that from the cross member, and then kind of reverse engineer how much I have to cut out of the oil pan. Hopefully, there's enough space. I mean, I've done a big blocks all the time. I think in Danny's car, it has small block in it originally, and I, I think I'd use the same mounts and all, the whole, the whole deal, and I didn't have to cut it all. So I'm assuming that a standard Chevy oil pan will just fit there. Uh, so realistically, I could just kind of mark off that or even steal that oil pan for reality. But that's, that's a complete motor. We don't want to mess with that. We want to mess with this fancy one I paid all the money for. And uh, so we'll cut that out, weld it all together. We'll seal all on it. We'll repaint it. And uh, it'll be perfect. No one will ever know what happened to it. So I'll get this jerked off and then we'll, uh, we'll carry on. Got the pan off. It's actually it's nice. It doesn't have a flapper in it, which uh, sometimes these ones have like a whole, you know, situation in there. Uh, so it's easy to cut up. I mean, it is freaking clean in there. I just wiped my hands through it. That's just a little bit of molly lube or whatever at the bottom. Uh, nothing was there. I got a, a few pieces of the cord gasket. Unfortunately, I tried to be careful, but I mangled the gasket. So I'm going to it for a new gasket tomorrow. Um, underneath, oh, the things I do for you guys. Oh, God. It's uh, what's my light? Oh, there it is. Windage tray is nice. It is a four bolt main. Still see all the cross hatching, like nice performance. The oil pump pickup and all that. So, so we're golden under here. Uh, I have no no issues whatsoever. I think this will be a everything he said it was. So it should be a good good little mill to uh, power this hot rod. So, we'll get back up top and we'll uh, put those tie rods together because we just have the center leg hanging. So I did measure it from the, the tip of the cross member to the end of the oil pan was 10 and 3 quarter inches. So simply once we get the cross member or the center leg across, we'll measure it again and see how much hacking we got to do. But uh, that might be a job for tomorrow because I don't have any gaskets put together anyways. Well, maybe I'll weld it and paint it and then deal with it tomorrow. Eh, I'll keep thinking to myself. Back on the bench. So, uh, this we gotta put together. Now what I always do is when I take them apart, I, I put the tape across and I take a picture of my phone. And for you old guys, you can take a picture with them uh, flip phones too, so it all works out. Then you have your measurement and you have the orientation. So, I'll have to check my picture, but I think it was like 14 inches or whatever it was. And uh, at the end of the day, it'll have to look just like this. Carry on. Now, if you look at this, the this is the outer tie rod. By uh, going left, loosening it, you're actually tightening it in. So it's got reverse uh, thread on it. That way, when it's on the car, you twist the turnbuckle and it can adjust in and out. Now I'm going to slather this with a little bit of anti-seize or never seize because uh, I want to. So we'll get this together, get these all jammed in. One more little tech tip I say it every time, but you got to make sure you do it. Kind of get them in evenly, because you don't want one all the way in and the other one has the adjustment, because then it's bottomed out. There ain't no more adjustment. So we'll get these dialed together and uh, back on the car, and then it's pretty simple from there. I'll be able to kind of crank the wheel side to side. I might have to get Danny out here, and because uh, you always like to see her out here, giving her a hard time. Yeah, there you go. Tie rods. And we're bleeding brakes. Wow! I've been bamboozled, and I don't appreciate it. No, there's no brakes to bleed. All you need oh. to do is crank the wheel. Okay. So, hang on. So here's what we got going on. Front suspension's all together. We got a eyeball alignment on it. So we're pretty close. The wheel is somewhat straight. Now here's the measurement we're going for. We've got the tape on the back of the uh, center link. And at the front, I don't know if you can see that there, but we're... It's about 10 inches. Now, the pan was 10 and 3 quarters or something like that. That's where it was sitting. So we'd have maybe 3 quarters of an inch. But crank the wheel 
all the way to one side. Does it matter? No, it doesn't matter. Just crank it hard. Well, I'm trying. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm just... Oh, okay. You're doing good. I hope you guys see it. The center link moves backwards on full crank. Okay, so that's all the way. Okay, so we'll put the tape back on. And then that reads... 11 and a half, 11 and three quarter. Do the other side just to double check, make sure it's the same. Cranky, cranky. I'm about to cranky, cranky. It's a pain to turn out with no, uh, no steering column. But we're changing a column, and everyone. I can barely reach. Well, if you're a little taller. <laughs> okay. Good. So this side it's is. Not all the way, though. We'll crank until it stops. Yeah, that's yeah. as far as it is. This one is like 11 and a bit. So I don't know what I said the first time. I forget. Anyways, so that's where we're at. So the pan was 10 and three quarter, 10 and a half. On crank, we're at 11 and something. So we'll probably have to take an inch or so out of that pan, which is really no big deal. So I think that's where we're going to cut up on the bench real quick here. So that's where I'll see you. So we're on the bench. We got my magic calculations. So, when I originally measured it, the oil pan was 10 and 3 quarter inches away from the cross member. So we got to pretend there's a cross member there. And the center link was whatever it was, 10 and a half. So, this is the problem I've ran into before, where if you put the oil pan in and the center link up, it would be sitting you know, right, right there, which is fine if you're only going to go straight. As you turn, the center link walked backwards. So, on full crank, the center link was 11 and a half back. So in theory, if we added three quarters of an inch, which is this tick right there, that should be about the maximum of where the center link would be back on full lock side to side. Now, this motor will be locked in with uh, solid motor mounts, but you know what, under jostling around or whatever, uh, I went an extra half or three quarter or whatever. So we're gonna go an inch and a half, so we're gonna cut it. So we're gonna cut an inch and a half up to there. We'll just plate it, do a whole big box. So it'll have lots of room. It's really easy on the inside here. There's a little brace there, which is irrelevant. There's no baffles and the pickup is at the back. So what I'll probably do, well, what I'm gonna do is we'll cut this out first, leave it uh, with, with no metal in it. Put it back on the car, just a few bolts. We'll crank it side to side and make sure it's still clearancing as if, you know, it'll be a big window. If that's good, then we'll trace some stuff out and we'll weld her up. Here is the section we cut out. I want just a little bit more just to be on the safe side. Uh, we might be able to use this as a patch panel or at the very least a pattern. So uh, drop the center link, put the oil pan back in, put on two bolts, center link back up. But now, grab this light, go on full crank. Oh, it's kind of hard to see, but you'll have to trust me. There's room. Um, and even, you know, if you really, you know, when you're at full crank, give it that extra little bit. It's still fine. I didn't, uh, I didn't get Danny out here or nothing, but we got lots of room. Obviously, that is no issue because it's kind of off, off center, but we're good. So, center link back off, oil pan back out, and then start welding. Clean, 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 clean. Don't want to put a dirty oil pan, especially when you've been grinding, metal dust, all that stuff in it. So. I, I blew it out with brake cleaning, it just went on there to sit, and we'll uh, we'll grind her down, make her look nice, and put some seal all on it tonight. I'll probably take it to work tomorrow and uh, clean it all out in the Varsol tank, so I don't want anything in this prize motor you guys bought me.
Okay, so there it is. All welded up. I think I'm happy with it. Just gotta double check, make sure it didn't, you know, go with like the zip cut a little too far. Weld seemed good, put a lot of heat to it. But, uh, I'll let that cool off a little bit. I'll clean it with some brake clean, wipe it all down, and then a little schmoo of seal all over all the welds. You know what? I, uh, when I did my 55, I had to modify the pan. I, I filled it with, I believe it was diesel. And that was the best for finding leaks and stuff like that. I think I went through it once and then cleaned it all out and had to like a few little pinholes. I mean, a little pinhole just, it'll leak, which you don't want. But I'm pretty confident this, you know, zillion tacks stacking up all over each other. Uh, so like I said, I'll let it cool down. And then just a little bit of seal all just to be doubly sure. And then, uh, yeah, we'll see you tomorrow when it's all cleaned up. I believe you can paint over this stuff. At least I'm going to. So there, it's the oil pan. Uh, cleaned it up real nice at work, and then I came home from my lunch break and painted it up, so it sat for oh, three or four hours. But it's pretty good. I filled it up full of uh, Varsol. It didn't leak, so I assume if it doesn't leak Varsol, it won't leak oil. I'm hoping. And sorry, you going on. Oh, I missed a little spot right there, paint. But anyways, we'll get her on and uh, cleaned everything up real nice. I did get a gasket kit because I ripped the side gaskets. So on these old pans, it's a three piece. So the rubber front and back is still in good shape on the car. Uh, and then I just gotta put this cork gasket on the side. So put a couple dabs of silicone to hold it in place. And then just the edges where it meets the rubber silicone there and there and zip this sucker up and it'll be ready to go right back on. So the pan is back on. I did schmoot with uh, silicone <clears throat> on the front and the back where the uh, rubber meets the road. So everything's just snug in there. Let it dry tomorrow. I'll torque it right up. I mean, we're not putting oil on it, running it anyways. we got Danny in here so she can crank the wheel. We should already be to the left. So make sure it's all the way to the left. Okay, so it's all the way. Nothing's touching. Lots of room. I put my finger all around. Okay, go the other way. So everything is snugged up so you can see the center link's going away from the oil pan. Okay, keep going. Getting in there. Yeah. Closer back. Is that everything? Yeah. So that's, there you go. I can still put my, hard to show on there, but I can still put my finger all the way around everything. I mean, it's close. So the other side's still good. Yeah, lots of room. So, there you go. A bunch of scooting around. We got that all taken care of. That's where we're in this video. A little teaser we'll start next. Box of brake parts. So, got a bracket and whatnot, but I got this fancy. This thing's gonna have power. Disc brakes, front disc. I think everything else should be somewhere along there. So, I mean, we have the brakes already hooked up. This is the booster, uh, metering block, proportioning valve set up, the bracket, all the miscellaneous clevis and everything I need to change this over. Um, I did get new hardware for that, so we should be able to plunk it in. I'm hoping it fits around the valve cover. The only thing, it may be an issue with that booster on, the valve cover may be a pain to take off. I know when I do big blocks, you ain't getting that valve cover off. There ain't no way. And that's just with a master, no booster. They do sell a kit, which I don't think I really want to buy. I think it'll be okay with a small block anyway, especially moving it forward. That actually moves everything over, I don't know, like a half an inch, it's like a big lever setup, but we don't have it on this. So that's what we're doing next. Bolt that on, get that dialed. I have piles and piles of brake line. I use that nickel copper stuff, so I'll be able to plumb everything. We have the rubber hoses. We have rubber hoses in the back. We should have a braking system in the next video. Might run the fuel line while we're at it. We have the tank. We have all sorts of stuff. Never ending parts. That's for damn sure. That's our leave it for now. Thanks for watching. Uh, leave a comment. Yeah, look at this thing. Car always looks better when there's a motor in it, as far as I'm concerned. Maybe in a few videos we'll fire this thing up. I don't know. What do you think? All right. See you later.